All right, what if the players are on a stay low kind of mission and they get captured? I want to send them somewhere they're going to hate. And that's the place I'm building today. Welcome back to another episode of Frankie D. Crafter. And today we're building a cell that was built under the source. We're basically mixing two D&D classics here. As you can tell, I already have some of the pieces cut out for this project. Stay till the end if you want to see how I torture my players. You don't want to miss that. I quickly want to give Dungeons by Hand a shout out since they were nice enough to send me some of the tools that I use for this project. And these tools made this project 10 times easier. They specialize in accessories for procs and cutters and a few more things you should definitely check out. Check them out, you might find something you like. One of the main inspirations for this project was actually this item coming up. I love recycling, mainly because it's like a shortcut. So when I saw this item, I knew exactly what I wanted to make from it. Last project I mentioned how the plaster almost ruined the project. The fast and final was neither fast or final. This time around I got the right stuff. This thing dried in minutes and I was able to texture it just the way I wanted to. This stuff was so good I was able to texture it with a big brush. When the project starts to get this big, I try to make all surfaces as interesting as possible. That means doing a lot of textures, but I wanted to add more than just textures. So I added faces. I get it. Some of you might think that the faces on the actual structures might be weird, but I mainly added them for role playing purposes. Think about if your players are in the dark. Dark vision does not give you color or anything. It just really gives you shapes and stuff. So it's not, it's not like they can see in the dark. So the way I would use these faces is if they are exploring this during nighttime and they're not in the right set of mind, I will describe these walls as if they were actual creatures coming at the players. So the moss, like they're about to eat the player or just even the eyes staring the players down in the dark. I think adding elements to your crafts that then you could use for role-playing purposes is key especially with some of the details that I add later on that are definitely definitely role-playing aspects that I think will add another touch of playability
right? If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all the good YouTube stuff. And don't forget to check out the links in the description below for more goodies. Let's continue. Now, this next step is the step that made me feel like I was on the right track. This project was gonna kill it at the table. I was almost done, and I was done with the steps that inspired the project. It was time for the step that I was the most scared of. I watched enough black magic craft to dread working with resin, especially because the resin had already yellowed since I waited so long to use it. Luckily for me, this was supposed to be dirty water. I even added a little bit more of the brown that I used to paint the base. I made sure to do half and half mix. Did I measure? Nah, I got this. I'm playing with fire here by just eyeing it. But I figured that if I mess up, I would just paint over it. And if you thought I was playing with fire before, you are about to cringe here. The resin was lighter than I expected it, so I added more paint. This was a dumb idea, mainly because there is not enough space to actually mix the paint into the resin at this stage, but that didn't stop me from trying. Best case scenario, this looks like dirty water. Worst case scenario, this looks like poopy water. It was a win-win either way. When it dried, I had a little bit spill over, no big deal. All I cared about was that it looked good, and it did. All I need now is some tiles to go with this set. I don't have them for this video. I'm just saying it. Just giving my thoughts to you guys, you know what I'm saying? Talking about being all set, I did some steps off camera. I hope you guys don't mind. Check it out. about adding a little bit of humor to your pieces. Um, remember how I said poopy water earlier? I wasn't kidding. And I think an amazing way to use this in role playing is by actually having your players not have the piece out and displayed yet. You ask your players after they get captured to roll for luck. I know luck, but follow me. 
you take the three lowest rolls, have the players that rolled lowest, have them end up in the cages that are hanging over the sewer and show the players where they are. Describe to them how nasty it smells there, how nasty everything feels when they grab the bars, like describe what's left in their hands. You know what I'm saying? Make them feel disgusted. At this point, have them interact with the environment just a little bit before you have a villainous guard show up and he's about to walk to the levers that control where this cages go up and down. At this point, you imply that the guard is about to drop one of those cages. At this point, have your players roll again. And just the reaction from them, because obviously they don't want their character to end up in that water, it is hilarious. The guard can only get to one of the levers. So having the players roll at that moment is insane. They will they will break D D rules to get out of it. It's 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 funny as hell. I mean, honestly, you should try it. Even if you don't build this exact build, have something in your game that's sort of like that and just watch the table's reaction and just see them like eat at each other. It's it's just funny. It's it's it was a good little moment on my table. All right. We're at that point of the video where we're almost done. Like always, I want to thank my patrons. Without them, none of this would be possible. They are more than just like a support provider. They actually help out with the videos. They help out with the builds. They're they're with me at every step of the build. So that's always really nice, of course. Um, they are, they're the best. They really are the best. If you want to consider joining Patreon and supporting the channel, check out the link in the description below. If that's not your thing and you just want to get your hands on like cool sweaters and shirts that I've designed, check the merch. That also helps the channel a lot. Like always, guys, thank you so much again for everything. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.